Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. It is Monday, March 25th. Happy Monday. Thanks for joining us. We had a little bit of uh, rain here and there, but the good news is the roads are drying up. That's what we hear. Just heard from Justin, who covered traffic all morning for us and is now back on weather duty. Yes, and, and look at that. We're seeing some blue skies. The roads are starting to dry up. We picked up nearly two tenths of an inch at the airport, so that's not bad. I mean, it was good to see the rain, but it does cause some issues on the roads a little bit earlier. Let's get right to radar. And you'll see that this line, this thin line of showers and a few thunderstorms is uh, tracking off to the east. So places like Gonzales now seeing some rain. Uh, it's not going to last very long. You see uh, it does not cover a lot of real estate. At least it's width. Uh, the width of that line does not. Uh, so once it pushes through, you'll be done with the rain. Uh, sun's trying to pop out. And once we see the sun, we'll get some warmer temperatures today, but also some very gusty winds. That's going to be a major theme this afternoon. We're expecting winds to gust as high as 40 miles per hour. Not yet. 59 at the airport, 60 in New Braunfels, 59 again, 54 burning, 53 in Kerrville. The air is a little bit drier and we're starting to see uh, some slightly cooler temperatures behind this boundary. Uh, but here's kind of the overall threat today, and that's going to be high wind and a fire danger for us. The severe weather threat well to our east and then there's also a winter weather component to this but that's up in the texas panhandle so our main threat is going to be those gusty winds and uh, a high fire danger we're going to talk a little bit more about that here in just a couple minutes wanted to get you the pollen count too oak is at 3020 so it actually came down some looks like the rain helped to wash it out a bit and we have low counts of mold hackberry and mulberry guys Checking trans guide right now around town. Nothing major. We do have some stalled or disabled vehicles in a couple different parts of town, but uh, the morning commute more or less over and the sun is shining there at 35 Palo Alto. There's I-10 at Woodstone. All good news there. And here's today's nine at nine. Israel and Hamas could soon swap hostages and prisoners. The proposal includes 40 Israeli hostages and around 700 Palestinian prisoners. At the CNN, analysts who helped break the news predict some Americans could go free in the exchange. This news comes the same week that Israeli officials are visiting Washington. Former President Donald Trump faces a deadline today to post a bond of nearly half a billion dollars in his fraud case or risk having his assets seized by authorities. His lawyers say he does not have the cash. Meanwhile, Trump is also expected to appear in a New York courtroom today in another case, the hush money case involving Stormy Daniels, where the judge today could set a new trial date. Stock markets are looking ahead to another clue on inflation this week with the release of the Personal Consumption Expenditures Index. It could help the Federal Reserve decide how many times it'll cut interest rates this year. Most indications point to three cuts before the year's out. The FAA is stepping up its oversight of United Airlines after some recent safety incidents. One plane landed in Oregon with an external panel missing, another rolled onto the grass in Houston, and a United jet headed for Japan lost a tire after takeoff. Chrysler is recalling nearly 300,000 vehicles over a potential problem with their side airbags. The defect could cause a rupture, sending metal fragments into the car. Recall effects recent Dodge Charger and Chrysler 300 cars. This could be the possible final months of a low cost internet for some people. The federal government's affordable connectivity program is coming to an end as early as May. If lawmakers do not pass new funding to extend the program, 23 million homes would see their bills spike by as much as $75 per month. Big change reportedly coming with the next iPhone software update. Reports say iOS 18 will give iPhone users more control over their home screen with a layout that's more customizable. It can also be the biggest home screen revamp in several years. The jackpots continue to rise after no winner Friday night. The Mega Millions jackpot rose to $1.1 billion. The next drawing will be tomorrow night. And no one won Powerball Saturday night, so that jackpot is now up to $800 million. The next Powerball drawing is tonight. If your March Madness bracket is busted, don't feel too bad. Apparently, it's the same for everyone else. After even more upsets this weekend, the NCAA says there are no more perfect brackets left in its own game, CBS's or Yahoo's. 
ESPN said just three perfect brackets remain on its side after 28 games. The Sweet 16 round begins on Thursday, and that is today's 9 at 9. Our top story this morning, the family of a teen found strangled and dead in a ditch is hoping for justice. Last night, family and loved ones followed in Caitlin Hernandez's final footsteps. The 17 year old went on a walk in a northeast side San Antonio neighborhood back on the 12th. Hours later, police found her body in a ditch on Del Oak Drive. Caitlin's aunts hope this march pushes someone to come forward with answers. It's not fair. It's not fair. And we won't stop until my niece gets justice. But we know SAPD is working um, hard on this case, and we have our faith in God and the community's prayers. Crime Stoppers is now offering a $5,000 reward to catch Caitlin's killer. If you have any information on the case, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number is on your screen right now, 210-224-STOP, and you can remain, remain anonymous. Tomorrow is Diabetes Alert Day, and it's a day to focus on the seriousness of diabetes and the importance of understanding your risk. University Health and the Texas Diabetes Institute will be hosting a resource fair tomorrow in honor of that. You can learn more about the disease, your A1C levels, and talk with medical health experts. You're encouraged to register beforehand. We have a link to do that on ksat.com in the ksat community section. A teen is using his personal health struggle to help save someone else's life. Zach Baza was just six months old when he had a transplant surgery. He received a small intestine, pancreas, and liver after his organs failed. Now he is 16 years old and he loves to read and swim. Things he gets to do thanks to another family's sacrifice. It's a blessing, basically. And it's, it sounds unreal, but... Yeah, um, it's just um, that I'm grateful to have what I have. Organ donation is a personal and important decision. So this Wednesday, we are hosting an online town hall to help you get the facts. We're going to talk about the importance of organ donation and the challenges and misconceptions around it. So we'll hope that you'll join us on Wednesday at 2 p.m. on KSAT.com. 905, 58 degrees. We're just getting started here on GMSA at 9. Well, later in the show, we're going to speak with Brahma's head coach, Wade Phillips, about their upcoming season, which kicks off on Sunday. But before that, Tiffany Huertas has a really cool story coming up after the break. She got to talk with Dr. Ellen Ochoa, the first Latina astronaut to go to space. When we come back, Tiffany is going to share their conversation about life in space and the message Dr. Ochoa wants to send to young girls. How does it feel to be in space? Well, you know, it's, it's an experience that's quite unlike anything that you can really experience on Earth. You're floating, everything you're dealing with is floating and you, you have to figure out, um, you know, you have to be very methodical and figure out <laughs> how you can get things done well in that environment. And then the second thing, of course, is the views of Earth from space. So cool. Well, for Women's History Month, we share the story of Dr. Ellen Ochoa, the first Latina astronaut to go to space. Vicky Huerta spoke to Dr. Ochoa about her day soaring through space, working at NASA, and advocating for science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. So Tiffany joins us live from the Whitty Museum's Space Exploration Exhibit with the story. Good morning, Tiffany. Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. The story is very cool, and I am excited to share that. But first, I want to show you something here at the Whitty Museum. This is NASA flight suit, worn in space by astronaut Dr. Ellen Ochoa. And you yourself can come here to the museum and check it out this month. Ochoa shares with me her passion for not only space, STEM, and education. It's an honor to meet you, Dr. Ochoa. To celebrate wow. Women's History Let's Month, we spent some time getting to know veteran astronaut Dr. Ellen Ochoa. If you can describe that day when you flew aboard that space shuttle Discovery 1993, tell me about 
that moment, how it was for you? Well, uh, you know, it was something I'd been uh, dreaming about for a while. So it was was definitely exciting for the day to come. Ochoa became the first Latina astronaut in space when she flew aboard Space Shuttle Discovery. Our primary objective on that flight was studying the Earth's atmosphere and particularly the problem of ozone hole and ozone depletion. Ochoa even took time out of her busy day in space to play the flute. You took music to space. One of the things we were doing was shooting um, a video, um, part of a liftoff to learning series that NASA had at that time, kind of comparing a day in space with um, a day they might be familiar with um, on Earth. And so we did talk a little bit about hobbies. Ochoa went on to participate in three more missions. In addition to supporting NASA's human spaceflight goals, I did have this opportunity now that really opened up um, to be able to do outreach, to reach out to lots of different kinds of audiences. But of course, a lot of them were focused on um, people or students who are not well represented in STEM, whether that's women or people of Hispanic um, background or other groups who are underrepresented in STEM. Talk to us a little bit about your Hispanic background. My dad's parents were Mexican. And um, after they had gotten married and started a family, uh, that's when they emigrated to the United States. It's a background where um, I think um, at the time my dad and his older brother sisters were growing up, um, it certainly not only wasn't encouraged to speak Spanish, but was actually pretty discouraged. And certainly they faced um, uh, other obstacles as well. Uh, So it's nice to be able to play a role now, um, especially with students out there who are also of Hispanic background to show, you know, the the sky's the limit or maybe the sky's not the limit right? (laughs) because of space. In 2013, Ochoa became the 11th director of NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston. She was the second female and first Latina to assume the position. What message do you have for other women or young girls? I think it's important to set high goals for yourself and not to limit them based on what you might hear from people, again, who don't know you, who don't know what kind of qualities you have, a willingness to ask questions and to learn. You know, that that is what is important. And she has a big passion for that education and STEM. She even wrote a bilingual children's book, We Are All Scientists. That's my daughter right there. (laughs) Um, So this book is amazing. It talks about just curiosity, you know, things like dirt ants, everything astronomers. And then even back here, I want to show this. This is for Justin. There's meteorologists forecast the weather and understand the storms so anything is possible when you're you're little and children can read this book in English and in Spanish and we are all scientists Mark Steph Tiffany why did she decide to study science and engineering Well, Mark, this is not something she always thought about. She loved music. She played the flute. She played the flute in high school. And then she went on to study more of that. But she was very interested in math. So when she went to college, she studied that even more. And that's how it all started. And so I'm sure a lot of kiddos out there, well, actually, I want to know, what did she eat in (laughs) space? What's really cool here at the Witty Museum, they have examples of different items that astronauts eat in space. Take a look. A lot of the freeze dried foods here, you see we have some beef in these little pockets here. We have chicken with corn. But one thing that I didn't know was the tortillas. She said she really enjoyed eating these tortillas and there's a reason behind this. She says when you eat bread, in space, the crumbs can be dangerous. They're, they can go not only everywhere, they can go in your eyes or the equipment. So that's why they stay away from that. And she loved eating like burritos. She loved eating scrambled eggs with tortillas. And who doesn't love that here on Earth? <laughs> that's true. Hey, and Tiffany, you graciously let me talk to Mrs. Ocho, which was awesome. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but I want to ask, do you think she's going to be watching the total solar eclipse? She's actually traveling to Austin to stay with a friend there, so she will be watching. And I did bring you and Mia to come join and ask some questions. So I'm going to put together a story later this week, and we're going to hear more of your interaction with her, Justin.
Awesome. And uh, full disclosure, because I was so excited to talk to her, <laughs> I missed my hit at noon because I was in there talking to her. It was That's okay. Nice. It was That's just, okay. There wasn't a lot of weather going on, so it was yeah. okay. I made up for it. Well, it, it, I was the, excited. The excitement <laughs> makes yes. total sense. <laughs> Thank you, Tiffany. We look forward to that. Thank, thanks, Tiff. <laughs> All right, Justin yeah. is here to talk weather and our uh, ever-changing spring forecast. Yeah, we had some showers and a couple of storms this morning. That's pushing through, but mm -hmm. that spring forecast you alluded to, it's going to be windy today. And yeah. that's that's the kind of spring feel that uh, we're going to have around here. So let's first start with the radar, and I'll show you that thin line of showers and storms is now pushing east of us. So, Gonzalez, the line is actually pushed through your neck of the woods. It's uh, moving towards Quero. It'll be there soon. And then uh, Howitzville, you are next in line. Uh, San Antonio, though, has cleared out. We're starting to see the clouds clear out, too. And so you'll see uh, those winds pick up here very soon. Before we get to that windy forecast, let me zoom in on some of these storms that are affecting our far eastern county. So Howitzville, uh, this line is going to be uh, near you very, very soon. It is moving through Shiner as we speak. And there likely is uh, a little bit of lightning mixed in here, some very heavy rain, but that's it. We're not looking for severe weather. That's not until these storms get into far east Texas that I think they start to become strong to severe. Uh, but we will watch these over the next 30 minutes or so as they affect uh, Howitzville and Quero. But again, San Antonio, skies are beginning to clear, and now we have to worry about the wind. Uh, so winds aren't all that strong right now, but they will become strong. We'll see a westerly wind always warms us up, uh, but it also dries us out. And these are the gusts around 2 o'clock today, gusting close to 30. Look out west. Gusts 44 potentially in Del Rio. And then by late afternoon, we could see some gusts here in San Antonio closing in on, on 40 miles per hour. It will be uh, very windy until the sun goes down, and then these winds will start to subside. Now, as you might imagine, if we have gusty winds and very dry air, this poses a very high fire danger threat. Del Rio especially, this is where we have an extreme fire risk today, according to the Texas a and Forest Service. But even here around San Antonio, it's uh, moderate to high, and certainly our western counties are going to be under that threat. So any fire that can get going, if it does, it will spread very quickly, and this is why we have to be so very careful. The dew point forecast shows, yes, dew points fall off in a big, big way. We'll see dew points in the 20s and 30s this afternoon, and that's why... Uh, that fire threat is there. As you look at the big picture, you can kind of get a general sense of how this storm is evolving. Uh, we got the low up here on the back side of it. You got snow and then out ahead of it. You got the warm conveyor belt of moisture and that allows for storms to develop. So we're going to have different sectors today. Uh, you have the warm sector where you're going to get uh, storms and severe weather in places like Jackson, Mississippi, Shreveport, Louisiana. You got the cold part of this. On the back side where you got the winter weather and then we're kind of in the middle where we get some dry air the the cooler air hasn't arrived just yet and that's why we have the high fire danger high temperatures today only 34 in amarillo so this shows you the difference here down in south texas 86 in laredo a typical not typical but what we uh, sometimes see here in texas on a spring day like this where you get these dynamic systems coming through so our forecast today 76 two o'clock we're up around 78 for a high, mostly sunny, and there are those strong westerly winds. We drop down into the 60s tonight, and by the way, by tomorrow morning, it will be chilly. Very, very quickly, I wanted to give you a sneak peek of the Easter weekend forecast if you're starting to make plans. Looks good. More humidity on Saturday, partly cloudy, 81, 83 on Sunday, mostly cloudy, so it should be good for whatever plans you may have. Uh, we do have that 20% 20 per, uh, 20 chance for shower on Wednesday. Otherwise, this is a pretty quiet forecast. Uh, we'll just watch for those gusty winds today. Yes, we will. But overall, not too bad this week. Not bad at all. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, sir. 919, 58 degrees. We'll be right back. She is a San Antonio staple that we're proud to call a colleague and more importantly, a friend. Jessa DiGuglielmo has served her community for decades through journalism and now the Chavez Legacy and Educational Foundation has recognized Jesse for her years of hard work and dedication. Yes, Jesse is a recipient of the foundation's 2023 Agia Lifetime Achievement Award. And her work in the field as a reporter has stood the test of time. Here's a look back on Jesse's Hall of Fame career. Curiosity and my love for the written word combined to 
become my desire to be a reporter. Born and raised in Laredo, Jessie Degollado says being a reporter was a dream she had ever since she was a little girl. My mother, in fact, told me, Ay, mijita, you're going to starve. You're going to starve, my little girl. You're going to starve. Well, I told her, Mom, I don't think so, but you'll see. You'll see. Jessie is a pioneer when it comes to Latinas pursuing a career in journalism. Her journey began in 1977 in the Valley and eventually made her way to Quesa in 1984. And she's been here ever since, covering countless stories. In Piedras Negras, in Uvalde County, in Monterrey, from the Davis Mountains in far west Texas, at the presidential residence, Los Pinos in Mexico City, at the papal site near Denver. Jesse has been honored by the Cesar Chavez Legacy and Educational Foundation, Catholic Television of San Antonio, and the San Antonio Association of Hispanic Journalists. She has even been inducted into the San Antonio Women's Hall of Fame. I was just the girl from Laredo, Texas, that made it in the valley and was blessed to come to San Antonio, and I've been here as long as I have. And so for that, I am proud. Jessie says when she started out in the business, the landscape was much different. 20, 30 years ago when I started, it was a very much male-dominated world. She says a lot has changed, including the role of Latinas and women in general. Now we have women who are in charge, making decisions, and helping running the show. When it comes to young women wanting to pursue a career in journalism, Jesse has a few words of advice. First, ask yourself, why do I want to do this? How much do I want to do this? Is it something that I'm willing to commit to? She says those are the most important questions you need to ask yourself because this business can be very demanding. Also, sometimes relationships and families can suffer because they don't understand what we do. And sometimes it takes 24 hours a day and Jesse's journey isn't over yet. She'll continue telling the stories that matter to you most, impacting people right here in San Antonio and inspiring more young Latinas to follow in her footsteps. Just know that you really do have it in you. If you want it bad enough, you do have it in you and it will come out. Stephanie Serna, Case at 12 News. Well, Steph, I love your story. Oh, thank That's you. That's a great well, tribute to her. And I know we both grew up watching yes. Jesse here in San Antonio. Oh, yes. Uh, we grew up watching her. Yeah. Uh, we So she gave advice in the story. Right. Uh, she gives advice to us every day here in the yeah. newsroom. Uh, we really are honored and, and, and lucky to, to work with Jesse. She's an absolute sweetheart, as you can probably tell. But uh, I remember when I first started here, I was like, there's Jesse Degollano over there. <laughs> Same here. Yeah, cool. Same here. Very and then cool. waving from a distance. Distance, she, yes. she truly is a, yeah. an, an inspiration. So Thank congratulations, Jesse. Congrats. Time now, 926 and 59 degrees for now. There's more ahead on GMSA at 9, including the latest on the gambling scandal in Major League Baseball. Superstar Shohei Otani expected to speak with reporters today about his former interpreter who's accused of stealing millions of dollars from him to pay off gambling debts. Plus, it's time to start looking ahead to Fiesta. When we come back, how you can get tickets to our exclusive KSET Parade viewing party. We'll be right back. We are in the final stretch of March. That means Fiesta is around the corner. Beginning today, you can purchase your tickets for the exclusive KSAT Fiesta Party for the Battle of Flowers and Fiesta Flambeau Parades. We have a link to buy tickets on KSAT.com. And in case you're wondering what comes with the tickets, well, here you go. You're going to get a prime seating to watch the parade, two tacos and one drink, access to a cash bar, and easy to get to bathroom. That works. And <laughs> a chance to meet some of us. Yeah, the bathroom is a key selling point yeah, for a I lot think of people. So, yeah. It's hard to find out there. Yeah. So don't go, don't miss out. It's all going to be a lot of fun, and tickets will definitely be going fast. And it'll be interesting to see how the weather will work out then. I mean, I know it's too early to ask, but there was uh, one year where we started with like a trench coat yeah. in the morning and the afternoon was just beautiful. Yeah, That's it tends to be pretty it. warm, but you, it's like a box of chocolates, yeah. right? It's so true. That's the fun of it. Have you guys ever been out to uh, Choke Canyon? Uh, Choke the reservoir? Yes. Okay, yeah. yes, I fished there one time. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, it's a pretty interesting area because, you know, they got alligators and stuff. Yes, they do. They also uh, have, check this out, some wild hogs down there. This is pretty cool. This is a cool shot. Uh, and you, it's kind of hard to see, but you see them there. Yep. Uh, they just, apparently just came right up. We're eating. Uh, they're pretty brazen, uh, but uh, yeah. that's pretty cool. 
Uh, that was taken again down there at Choke Canyon. Uh, they were camping down there. We appreciate the picture, as always. Uh, there is the line of showers and storms that uh, made their way through San Antonio a little bit earlier. They are now pushing east towards Cuero and along I-10 towards Houston area. That really, by and large, getting out of our area. So we're not going to worry about the rain anymore. Uh, the clouds will clear and temperatures will start to warm up. So I'm 59 in San Antonio right now, 60 in New Braunfels, 60 in Seguin. we got mid-50s in Bernie and Kerrville. The winds out of the north at the moment, but we're going to see them really start to pick up out of the west today, and the winds will become gusty once we head towards the lunch hour. 73 noontime, and then we'll make our way up to about 78 with that westerly wind, 20 to 25. Uh, there is a little bit of dust in the atmosphere, too, coming in from west Texas, so that's... It's uh, it's going to stir up the dust a little bit more with these kind of winds today. What can we expect the rest of the week? What about Easter weekend? We'll look ahead to that forecast here in just a couple of minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. We are two weeks away from the total solar eclipse, so it's time to start thinking about where you're going to be for it. Several hill country towns and cities have been preparing for the big event, so they want to make sure they can accommodate the influx of visitors that they're going to be getting for prime viewing of the eclipse. Right now on KSAT.com, we have an article to get you prepared for the eclipse. There are some tips on there like fueling up your cars with gas, bracing for a lot of traffic, and preparing for everything to be a little extra busy. That's right. So if your cell phone doesn't work during that time, don't worry. It might be because the cell towers are overwhelmed with everyone on their cell phones. So you can read this full story right now on our website at KSET.com. Yeah, think ahead, plan ahead. Well, in your morning headlines, one of Major League Baseball's biggest stars is expected to address reporters today for the first time regarding the theft and illegal gambling accusations against his former interpreter. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the latest on the gambling scandal. A two-run homer, Shohei Otani! Baseball superstar Shohei Otani is set to address the media today for the first time since his former interpreter was accused of stealing millions of dollars from him to pay off gambling debts. I think it's good. I, I think it's uh, it's the right thing to do, and I'm happy he's going to uh, you know speak. The Dodgers fired Ipe Misuhara last week after questions were raised about wire transfers amounting to more than four and a half million dollars allegedly sent from Otani's bank account to a California bookmaker. Mitsuhara initially told ESPN that Otani knew about his gambling debts and paid them off for him, but a day later, Mitsuhara insisted Otani had no knowledge of the debts and had not transferred the money. I asked him, Ipe, did you lie to me in that interview? And he says, yes. He says that Otani never knew about the gambling. A spokesperson says Otani is the victim of a massive theft. We have conflicting accounts about what Otani knows, and that's at the core of what is happening right now with the Major League Baseball investigation. And now questions are being raised about Mitsuhara's past. His biography with Otani's previous team, the Angels, claims he graduated from the University of California, Riverside, and that he previously worked as an interpreter for the Boston Red Sox. But the university told The Athletic it has no record of Mitsuhara being a student and the Red Sox say he was never employed by the team in any capacity. California is one of a dozen states where sports gambling is illegal, and the IRS has now opened an investigation into Mitsuhara. Now, Mitsuhara insists he never bet on baseball. He and Otani are both under investigation by the league, but Otani is expected to keep playing as the investigation unfolds. Well, in the NCAA, the Sweet 16 is set. Only one Texas team is moving on. Houston advances to face Duke on Friday after beating A&M last night in overtime, 195. But don't worry, Aggies, the Longhorns are out too <laughs> after they lost to Tennessee on Saturday, 62-58. And Baylor was upset by the uh, Clemson yesterday, 72-64. Sweet 16 round tips off on Thursday. Well, it's game day for our Spurs, and they are hosting the Phoenix Suns again tonight. So tip-off is at 7 p.m. They played the Suns Saturday, and they lost that game. So they are hoping, we're all hoping, for redemption tonight. Go Spurs, go. Go Spurs, go. 9.36, 59 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. When we come back, we are speaking with San Antonio Brahma's head coach, Wade Phillips, as the team gets ready to start the season on Sunday against the D.C. Defenders. San Antonio Brahmas start their season as part of the new United Football League on Easter Sunday. A familiar face will be roaming the sidelines for San Antonio. Former Cowboys head coach Wade Phillips. Well, Phillips led the XFL Houston Roughnecks to success last year. Now he's running the Brahmas herd. And Wade Phillips joins us live 
Good morning, Coach. Hey, good morning. Morning, Coach. It's an honor to talk to you. Uh, we know it always helps to have continuity with any program. Talk to us about how you were able to bring over some staff and players from Houston to give the Brahmas a boost. Well, first of all, we kept a lot of the uh, Brahmas players, uh, the good players on their team from last year. Um, and then we just tried to pick good players. Certainly, uh, we knew a lot about the Roughneck players, so uh, we felt like we got uh, great picks from there. And then, uh, but we have a lot of other guys that were actually all XFL uh, on other teams. So uh, we put together a really good bunch, I think, and. Uh, great young men, uh, number one, and, and hopefully good football players. Well, aside from an offense with more firepower, what are your expectations on the other side of the ball, especially the Brahma's pass rush? Well, uh, I mean, that's last year, but we led the league in, in sacks last year with, with the Roughnecks and also in deep, total defense. So, uh, you know, with my background, <laughs> I expect to have a good defense, and and we know we'll have a, a potent offense with a with a lot of really fast, great receivers that uh, can give us a chance to score a lot of points. So, uh, both sides of the ball, we're really confident, and we're excited to hear about that high power offense, coach. All right, so what kind of challenges come with only a ten game regular season? Does a smaller league and that condensed scheduling help or hurt when it comes to building a team for postseason success? Well, I, I, you know, 10 games is still enough games that, that you can get your team the where you want them if you're in the playoffs. First first, first job is to get in the playoffs. Um, you know, we're playing D.C. Uh, this week. Uh, they they play, played in the championship game last year. They had most of their players back. So this will be a, a real challenge for us, and uh, hopefully our fans will, will be there to really uh, cheer us on and, and give us that extra help that uh, everybody needs at home. Well, speaking of fans, if you could speak directly to San Antonio Brahma's fans right now, what would you say to them? Come see us play. You're gonna you're gonna enjoy the game. Like I said, we have uh, we have some spectacular players. I think on both sides of the ball. Um, some of them were here last year. Uh, some of them we we uh, picked up. So I, I think it's gonna be a fun event. It's a it's a family event too. It's football. Everybody in Texas, I know, love football, especially San Antonio. So. Uh, just come out and see us play, and I think you'll really enjoy it. And you'll come back because uh, we're going to have the team that will represent our, our city really well. Outstanding. Well, Coach, it's good to have you in San Antonio, and we wish you the very best in this upcoming season. Thank you. Thank you. Look forward to it. Yes, sir. Thanks, Coach Phillips. All right, so once again, folks, Brahma's season opener this Sunday, 11 a.m. over at the Alamo Dome. You can get tickets online right now. And if you use the promo code KICK20, you can get 20% off. Season tickets are also still available. You can find the link to buy tickets on ksat.com. That was Wade Phillips. I know. That's that kind of cool. Super cool. <laughs> Let's look out there with a live cam. The sun is out, 59 degrees, not too bad. He's a defensive guy, yeah. a defensive coach, but he's got a high-powered offense. Yes. Where, where are we going to go wrong? Yeah. Seems, yeah. Kind, of, seems kind of proud of that. And he, <laughs> and what, what coach didn't say, maybe he's a little bashful, is he brought over a bunch of offensive coaching staff from Houston here to San Antonio. So it's going to pay off. It's going to pay off. exciting. So yeah. I think it'll be a good season. We are excited about it. We're also very excited about the Eclipse. Yeah. As you guys said earlier, Two, Two weeks, weeks away. away. Yeah. I can't believe it's almost here. Uh, so today's fun fact is kind of a meteorological one. It's still too far out to get a reliable forecast. So if you're starting to hear forecasts about what it's going to be like uh, on the day of the eclipse, don't buy into them just yet. I mean, we can get a general idea, sure, uh, but this far out, it's still just not going to be reliable. Honestly, when it comes to clouds, it may be the day before that we could really nail down the forecast, and the, the weather is going to be important here. Clouds, if clouds are around, it's still going to be awesome. It's still going to be spectacular, but maybe not quite as. We're hoping maybe for some clear skies, but look, I, again, it's just too far out to say. Give us a few more days and we'll start to at least get into some uh, generalities about what we think. Uh, so stay tuned for that, but it is going to be an important part of uh, viewing the eclipse. Well, let's look at the time lapse. I'm going to take you back to 4 a.m. this morning. We had some showers and rain around. You saw it come through there. We picked up almost two hundredths of uh, two tenths of an inch, I should say, at the airport. Uh, but that has moved along, and now we're seeing skies clear out. Although 
You notice that in the horizon, just a little bit hazy. I think that's probably some dust coming through. We had some big time winds out in West Texas yesterday, and we know when we get these wind events, whatever it was in West Texas yesterday, it kind of transports right out uh, here to Central Texas and South Texas. So there could be a little bit of dust to contend with today. And that line of showers and a few storms that we talked about earlier continues to quickly push east. Uh, so really it's kind of uh, moving through our last line of counties here. Howitzville, Quero, and uh, Yorktown, you are getting some rain right now. And well, Howitzville, it's, I mean, it's right on your doorstep. If you're not seeing showers yet, you will within the next few minutes. And you could hear rumble of thunder, although we've not seen a lot of lightning and thunder with this. It's mostly just rain, and we'll certainly take that. Uh, here's the satellite picture, and we still do have a few leftover clouds here around San Antonio, but once you get past Hondo, it's clear. Uvalde, Del Rio, Eagle Pass, all seeing clear skies at this point, and that's what we have to look forward to here in San Antonio. The sun will be out, yes, uh, but it will be windy. That's going to be the other side, the other component to this storm system. 59 right now, 57 Kerrville, 64 Pleasanton, 64 in Uvalde, and right around 60 or so here in San Antonio. But with a west wind today and drier air, you will see temperatures warm up quite a bit. Dew points are in the 50s, and these numbers are dropping, so the air is drying out with a high of 78 forecast today here in San Antonio. Some 80s on the map, especially as you get down to the south, Pleasanton, Kennedy. Uh, but we got warmth, we got dry air, and we've got gusty winds. Those three things combined will make for a high fire danger. This is the projected wind gust today, right around 5 o'clock, probably when we peak here in San Antonio, some gusts 30 to I think even 40 miles per hour. Can't rule that out, and so if it is your trash day, we say this all the time, know that uh, some trash cans will roll away with these kind of winds. And uh, there is the fire danger. This is from the Texas a and Forest Service. We like to look at this because it kind of puts everything together. Where are we seeing the driest air? Where are we seeing the gusty winds, gustiest winds? And really, it kind of puts a bullseye over Del Rio. So this is an area with an extreme fire risk today. If a fire were to get started, you know, welding or spark or anything like that, once a fire gets going, it can spread really quickly. So that's why we got to be so careful. Hill country, but even here in San Antonio, there's a moderate to high risk. So the forecast, 74 tomorrow. We start off at 46. Know that it will be chilly tomorrow morning. So too will be on Wednesday morning. A little system works on Wednesday. That could give us a chance of a shower, but I wouldn't expect it too much. 77 Thursday, Good Friday, 78. Easter weekend will be in the 80s. A little more humidity, a little bit more cloud cover, but we are not forecasting rain at this point for Easter. Good news for all the kiddos out there. Indeed. Thank you, Justin. 948, 59 degrees. Let's look out there with Zoo Cam. Today it is Whooping Crane Cam. And where are they? Are they on the left side of the screen again? Little camera oh, shot. Oh, yeah, at the top I, of it. I looked in on the, uh -huh. the hippos this weekend just uh -huh. to see if they were kind of taking the weekend off. Yeah, they were lounging at both ends in their pool. They were very happy. Yep. Okay. Found it on uh, ksat.com. <laughs> it must be enjoying the weather. It's a great day to go to the zoo. We'll be right back. Are you sure about this? Arthur the King fell to fifth place on ticket sales of $4.4 million. Immaculate, starring Sidney Sweeney, debuted in fourth place, taking in $5.4 million. After two weekends on top, Kung Fu Panda 4 slipped to third place, but $16.8 million gave it a domestic total of $133 million in 17 days. Here, we're equal, men and women alike. What we do, we do for the benefit of all. Dune Part 2 spent its third straight weekend in second place, earning $17.6 million for a domestic total of $233 million. TV Spangler, you stay inside this car. I have a ghost to bust. Ghostbusters Frozen Empire debuted number one, collecting $45.2 million, slightly higher than the opening of its 2021 predecessor, Ghostbusters Afterlife. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. It was a special weekend at SeaWorld San Antonio. So over 1,000 children with cancer, their families and medical staff spent the day there to forget their challenges and just have fun. They spent the day riding rides, learning about animals and enjoying a picnic. So this is the Hope Hits Harder Cancer Foundation's fourth annual trip to SeaWorld. The founder, Tommy T-Bone Bounds, created the organization in honor of his wife, Jana, a hardworking advocate who lost her 24-year battle with cancer. 
Say, there's hope in everything you do, and there's other people that care for you. And what a way to celebrate my, uh, my wife's life is by having the Janet Banana Day at SeaWorld. You know, at the end of this day, I'll, I'll be satisfied. Did you sign up? We made a difference. And Jana, God bless her, who's above, will see what we're doing, and she'll say, good job, T-Bone. He says it's important that these children get to have fun alongside other kids fighting the same fight. The organization wants them to know the community will never forget them. A remarkable young athlete is teaching us all that if you believe in yourself and know what you want, you can make it happen. ABC's Danny New introduces us to a young man who once made history happen on the football field while being completely blind. Six and a half years after making history, and Jake Olson is now inspiring folks with a different sport. How about this for an inspirational moment? You may remember when he was a long snapper at USC. And a good snap from Jake. When he came into this game to snap an extra point, he became the first completely blind football player in Division I history to take the field. When the mo moment finally came to go out there, of course there was this like, oh my goodness, but it felt right and it felt like I earned it. When Jake was eight months old, a form of pediatric cancer led to the removal of his left eye, and then at 12 years old, his right eye as well. Yeah! But just after the operation that removed Jake's sight, it was actually golf that he picked up first, and it would play a big role later on. The whole reason why I believed I could ever consistently snap was because I could consistently hit a golf ball. Jake says the repetition of a golf swing made it easier, and not getting intimidated by the sight of, say, a giant bunker gave him an advantage. Here we go, Jake! Fast forward 15 years, and here he is at the World Long Drive Celebrity Shootout this past month in California. How it works is his dad places the ball and gives him feedback each swing. And by the way, his dad does not take any excuses. You know, you're not playing well, but it makes sense. You're blind, you know, at least you're hitting the ball. It's like, no, my dad's like, no, why isn't that closer? That type of, I guess, expectation has really pushed me. Basketball, basketball, let's go. Kelly running 296. On his final swing of the day, Jake had his best drive, smacking the ball nearly 300 yards, once again inspiring folks with how athletic and how determined he is. That last one was just a you know dead bullet, and it just was, uh, it was, it was pretty cool. By the way, you may have noticed him in the beginning, but I have to make sure we acknowledge Jake's right-hand man, Quebec, who was there last weekend, but also was seen here helping Jake onto the field for his final home game at USC back in 2018. Such a cute man. I love you, Quebec. In New York, for ABC News, I'm Danny New. And Danny took my line. I was going to say, who's a good boy? Oh, <laughs> I know. Yeah. That's amazing, though. That is. Thank you for bringing us the story, and thanks for joining us today. Have a great day. KSAT, we'll see you back here for the News at Noon.